Was Jesus God? Did the Old Testament foretell that he would be? Did Jesus himself affirm that he was? Did the New Testament teach that he is God? Today, the biblical case for the divinity of Jesus. Hi, and welcome to Hot Topics. This is Robert Furrow. If you're new here, consider liking, subscribing, and sharing, and ringing the bell so you can get all of our new videos. The comment section is open below. We would love to hear from you. One of the things that sets cults apart from genuine Christianity is that they believe something different about Jesus. They do not believe the divinity of Christ in the way that we do. They've always got some take on it. Today, we're going to look at 15 passages that tell us that Jesus is God, and this is going to be rapid fire. Otherwise, it would have to be a lengthy video. I will explain as I go along. You can take some notes. You can come back and pause this if you really want to dive into it. I think you could use this as a foundation for the divinity of Christ. First of all, in Colossians 1.15, it says, He, speaking of Jesus, is the image of the invisible God the firstborn over all creation. It doesn't mean he was the very first one created or the first one born, but that he holds the position of the firstborn, meaning the firstborn child gained everything. It goes on to say, for by him, all things were created that are in heaven and are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. Jesus is the part of the Godhead that is the creator. And that's an amazing thing when we think about that. It goes on to say in verse 17, and he is before all things and in him all things consist. And he is the head over the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have preeminence. That's a pretty broad statement as to who Jesus is, and it's very undeniable. Let's go to the second. That's John 1, 1 through 5. It says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Then it goes on to say, He, this is the Word, was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him nothing was made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness does not comprehend it. He was in the beginning with God, and he was God. And then in 1 John 1, 14, just a few verses later, it says, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Just in case you think that they're talking about someone else, it's talking about Jesus who showed us who God was. No man has seen God at any time, but the only begotten has revealed him to us. In John chapter 8, verses 56 and 59, Jesus affirms that he is God by saying, Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day and saw it and was glad. Then the Jews said to him, You are not yet 50 years old, and have you seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. And that I am is the name of God, the name that God revealed in the burning bush to Moses. I am that I am. And Jesus will return to this over and over again, referring himself to I am. Not only that, but he says here, before Abraham was, I am. And Abraham rejoiced to see my day. That he was in existence before Abraham. Let me give you a couple of Old Testament passages that tell us that Jesus is God. There's Isaiah 7:14, which says, Behold, I give you a sign. A virgin shall conceive and bear a child, and he will be called Emmanuel. That is God with us. A little bit later on in Isaiah, in Isaiah 9, 6, it says, Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and he will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father. There would be a child who would be born Mighty God. What other child could it be that would have been born except for Jesus Christ that has made the incredible impact around the world like it was promised in the Bible, a fulfilled prophecy, that one of the descendants of Abraham would bless all nations. Now, the New Testament also affirms that Jesus is God. Listen to Hebrews 1.9. You have loved righteousness and hated lawlessness, Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companions. In chapter 1 of Hebrews, they're talking about the preeminence of Christ again over everything. And there, God calls Jesus God. 
I've used this before when debating someone from the cults, and they tell me that Jesus isn't God. I'll read that passage and say, God called him God. You say, I shouldn't believe he's God. God called him God. I think I'll believe God over believing you. God affirms that he's God. The New Testament affirms that he's God. The Old Testament affirms that he's God. We've seen Jesus affirming that he's God. Let me give you another one. It's in Revelation chapter 1. But before I read verse 8, let me read you verse 18. Both of them are Jesus speaking. He says, first of all, I am he who lives and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. And I have the keys to death and Hades. Also in Revelation 1.8, it says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord, who was, who is, and who is to come, the Almighty. When people tell you Jesus never claimed to be God, <laughs> he didn't only claim to be God, he claimed to be Almighty God. Let me give you another one. Acts 20, 28. Therefore, take heed to yourselves and to the flock of God, among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers, to shepherd the church of God which he purchased with his own blood. There it says that God purchased the church with his own blood. In Colossians 2.9, we're told that in him, and that's Jesus, in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. We also see at the end of the book of John that Thomas is there and Jesus reaches out his hands to show him his scars and his side and says, touch and see Thomas. And Thomas falls on the ground and worships him and says, my Lord and my God. We see other places that Jesus receives worship. There's no one else in the Bible that receives legitimate worship. There are places where angels stop men from worshiping them, but Jesus receives their worship because he indeed is God. Let me give you another one that you're probably familiar with, and that's Micah 5.2 that says, You, O Bethlehem, though you are small among the villages of Epaphrath, out of you will come a ruler who will rule my people. His days are from everlasting. Another Old Testament passage that affirms that Jesus, the Messiah, will be God. His days are from everlasting. 1 Corinthians 8, 6 says, Yet for us there is one God. That's like the Shema out of the Old Testament Deuteronomy. The Lord our God is one God. And so in 1 Corinthians 8, 6, Yet for us there is one God, the Father of whom are all things, and we for him, one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom are all things and through whom we live. Jesus also did God stuff. You remember in the book of Mark when that paralytic is brought to him and they drop him down through the roof and they want Jesus to heal him of his paralysis. But Jesus instead says, your sins are forgiven you. And they say, how can he forgive sins? No one can forgive sins but God. And they're right. That is true. And Jesus said, so that you would know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins, I say to you, pick up your bed and walk. And he picked up his bed and he walked away. He did the visible after he removed his sins so that they would know that the Son of Man has the power on earth to forgive sins. The evidence in the Bible for the deity of Jesus Christ is so overwhelming that some cults have changed the Bible. They get their own version, they change the Bible so that they can take those things out because they don't want their people reading them because they would clearly see the truth. And that should tell you something very powerful. Yes, that little baby that was born and laid in that manger is God Almighty.